today is, what do you want me to do for you? Wow. Imagine Jesus is here. He's looking at you eye to eye, and he says, what would you like me to do for you? I call that a blank check. <laughs> All you got to do is you put the date in there, okay? Just put the date in, today's day. Uh, put your name in, the blank check. And, and then what, all you have to do is give him your request. Now, I know what some of you might be thinking. Perhaps you might say, you know what I really want is happiness. Happiness seems to be so elusive. I, I just wish I were happier. Some people are so happy, and, I, and it makes me feel all the more sad. I just wish I had happiness. Uh, somebody else might say, you know, all I want is money, because I think money would make me happy. <laughs> You know, I wish I could hit the big one. I mean, come on, every one of us has thought, what, have, what would I do if I won the lotto? Oh, you know, I'd give at least half to the Lord. Lord, it's a bargain here, bargain deal. <laughs> right? And, and then we start thinking about everybody we'd help. It's like, I've given this. What, if Jesus said, what would you like me to do for you? He said, Lord, just a boatload of money would really be a big help. Uh, somebody else is thinking, no, no, because money just can't buy you peace of mind or happiness. The people that have all that money, it seems like, my goodness, they don't know what to do with it. And, and they're so unhappy, they, they experience everything in life, and then they say, is that all there is? I want peace of mind. I just, Lord, give me peace. I'm an anxious person if you just give me peace. Somebody else is saying, you know what I want? I'm not anxious, I got enough money, I've got peace of mind and happiness, but you, you know what? I'm just not satisfied with life. Is this all there really is? And when I, say, I, I just want satisfaction, <laughs> fulfillment, purpose, purpose. Uh, perhaps you might say, well, you know what I really need is love. It seems like nobody really loves me. I don't have anyone in my life that I can love. I need a relationship with, where there's love, and, that it's reciprocal. Because I know that there's givers and takers, and then there's those biblical kind of lovers. The givers are always given because the other person's always taking. Or they're the takers who always take and because the other person's always giving. I want a relationship where it goes back and forth. I need love in my life. Lord, I, what do I want? I want love. I want love. <laughs> Maybe it's respect. When men were asked, uh, what would they prefer to have, uh, uh, <clears throat> to either have uh, love or respect, H have people say to you, uh, well, I love you or I respect you, uh, it turns out that 75% of all the men said, I would rather go without love and be respected than to have love and go without respect. They said, all I want is respect. I want people to respect me. I want people to respect me. Somebody says, you know what, I just need a friend. I've talked to these people, they've only been on Facebook for a week and they got a thousand likes. I've been on for the last 10 years and nobody likes me. <laughs> I just need a friend. What can I do for you? I want a friend. I want a friend. I just like to be smarter. I always feel like the dummy in the group. I don't care what the topic is, there's somebody who always knows more than me. I just wish I were smarter. I just wish I were smarter. You might write on there, I just wish I were safe and secure. I'm always feeling threatened. I always have an anxiety about me. I'm just not secure. I would like security. Or maybe, you know what, I'm growing old. I wish we could turn the clock back. I had more time. Boy, I would do everything so different. Lord, what I want is more time, more time. Or somebody say, I just need a little more comfort. Life has been tough. How come so-and-so has it so easy? Everything falls into place for them, and I, my, my life is always so difficult. Lord, I wish it were just a little more comfortable here. It's a blank check. You know, some of you are thinking, maybe just better looks. Maybe you're saying the preacher needs to say that better looks. <laughs> you know, the person looks in the mirror and says, look, I, I'm aging. Maybe I need a little facelift. Uh, maybe I need to color my hair. I, I just need better looks. If I look better, people would like me more. I don't know what you're filling in the blank. A nicer car, a nicer home. 
I don't know what you're putting in the blank. A lovely family. My family is so messed up. I just wish we were that model perfect family like so and so. Although you never really live in their house. You don't know what it's really like. I don't know. Fill in the blank. Once you filled in the blank, then I want to add one little thing. Now let's just suppose you're also blind. You're blind. Do you think that would change what you would be asking for? Just suppose you were blind. And let's imagine that not only are you blind, but let's imagine Jesus is coming your way. He's coming towards you. Because that's exactly what's going on in the passage today. In Mark chapter 10 it says, And then they came to Jericho. Now if you were to read in uh, the Matthew Gospel, you'd find that, wait a minute, it says they were coming from Jericho. Which way was it? Well, Jericho was an old Jericho and a new Jericho. And so you could literally be going from Jericho to Jericho at the same time. How about that? And so obviously he's in between the two locations and in between the two locations that are Jericho and Jericho because the old Jericho uh, would soon be taken over by the new Jericho. Uh, so Jesus is approaching uh, and his disciples are with him and together there's a large car crowd. They were leaving the city uh, and then they were, but they came to Jericho. And so they are, they're on their way and we find a man in his condition his condition is that he is a blind beggar. He's a blind beggar. It says a blind man, Bartimaeus, that is to say the son of Timaeus. Bar means son, Timaeus, Bar Bartimaeus. He's just telling it, his name is the son of Timaeus. He say he was sitting along the roadside and he is begging. So this guy is poor because he's blind, and he's out with outstretched hands begging. This is the condition he finds himself in, and I want to suggest that it's your condition too. We're blind. We are either blind or we were blind. In 2 Corinthians 4, it says this, the God of this age, that's a reference to Satan, small g, he's the God, he's the one that people worship in the time in which we live. They're not worshiping the true and living God. They're worshiping the false God. The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers. You were blinded before you came to Christ. Or if you haven't come to Christ, you're blind right now. You just don't see what he's talking about here. It says, the God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ who is the image of God. They're blind. They can't see. It's not that they don't want to see. They can't see. Do you ever wonder why you share your faith with someone and it's like nothing is registering? A person will say, I read the Bible, but it just doesn't make sense to me. Well, if they're an unbeliever, it'll never make sense. Because he is blinding the eye so that they will not see the truth of the glory of God in the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I think I've told you before, I was going door to door, knocking on doors, inviting people to come to church. And I knocked on the door and a guy on the inside yelled, go away, I'm an agnostic. <laughs> and I said, you're an agnostic? means you don't know. I do know. Open the door so I can tell you what I do know. <laughs> he opened the door. So what do you know? I shared the gospel with him. It still didn't register. <laughs> he said, I don't want to close the door when I went on my way. Why is it? Why is it it's so clear to some people and so unclear to others? It's because the God of this age has blinded the eyes. He does not want a person to come to faith in Christ. But when you believe Christ, the blinders are removed from your eyes. It's a work of the Holy Spirit when, he, when you're born again. You're born with new vision. You can see the glory of, of Christ in the gospel. And you become a follower of Jesus. So here, here, here this guy is, and here we are. We're, we're blind spiritually as he was blind physically. And so he makes a solicitation. It says that when he heard that it was Jesus... 
Jesus had a reputation. Obviously, he had heard already about Jesus. Because when he heard it was Jesus, he's going to make a big change. He's going to say, he began to shout. Jesus, son of David, have mercy. Mercy is pity. Mercy is compassion. It's withholding from you what you deserve. That's pity. Have pity on me. Notice what he shouts out. Jesus, the name Jesus means Jehovah saves. Son of David, which means he's the Messiah, the promised redeemer that was to come, the anointed one who was going to rule and reign over Israel. And he's crying out, have mercy on me. He's begging. Begging. Not demanding. He's not demanding of God do this. He's begging for God to do something. He's not demanding Jesus do something. He's begging for Jesus to have mercy. Have mercy. The people around him rebuked him like, who in the world are you? I mean, you're blind, you're poor, you're a beggar. Who in the world are you? Be quiet. And he shouted all the more. Got the picture? Shouted all the more. Son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. Too often, we are too proud to have mercy. We don't humble ourselves and ask for mercy. We make demands of the Lord rather than saying, Lord, have mercy on a poor, blind beggar like me. We're just too proud and arrogant to receive his blessing. They're trying to stop him. Stop, stop. Don't call on Jesus. So here's his invitation. Jesus stops. And he said, call him. I call this come, come. So they called the blind man, that's what it says, and they said, cheer up. It's like, you lucky dog, this is your lucky day. <laughs> cheer up, buddy, you, you should be really happy because he stopped for you, the likes of you. Can you, you can just see the picture? He says, cheer up. And then he says, stand up, get up, man, get up. Why? You have an audience with Jesus. He is calling for you. My niece was here last week and she picked that verse as one of her verses in her, in her little presentation on missions. It says, I have, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you. Uh, you didn't really call on him. He's calling on you. He's calling on you. He said, he's calling you. And so at that point, the man throws his cloak aside. He doesn't want anything to impede the progress of going to Jesus who is summoning him. I grew up in Detroit in the neighborhood I grew up in. When we would go and invite somebody out to play, we didn't knock on the door. We stood outside their door and we shouted out their name. Anybody else like that? Remember that? And, and, and we had a little thing that we would say, oh, in front of it. So I go down to my friend Victor's. I say, oh, Victor. And, and the whole neighborhood do. I was outside yelling for my friend to come out of the house. And, and Jesus calls the man, and he comes. And Victor inside would throw down whatever he's doing, and he'd go to the door. And if he didn't show up within a couple minutes, I mean, I would do this a couple times, louder and louder. And I would know, well, guess he's not home today, and we go on our way. This guy throws everything aside. That's what you got to do to come to Christ. You count it all but lost. We sang that song. We sang that song. You throw everything aside. I was eight years old. I was at a campfire, a camp when the gospel became clear as a bell to me and I needed to believe. And the man that was giving the invitation said, all right, well, all, of you, all the kids are going to go down to the pop shop. The guys that raised their hand that wanted to receive Jesus as Savior, you stick around, come down to the front. All those guys, man, it was like as soon as he said that, they were out of there like a bullet. Boom! 
because they want to get in line to buy snacks at the pop shop. And I threw that all aside. And I stayed and I went down to meet with the man who opened up the Bible and opened my eyes that Jesus is the Savior and I accept him as, as my Savior. He threw his cloak aside. He didn't want anything to impede him. For some people, you've got to throw other relationships aside. Some it's a job aside. Some of it, it's family aside. You may be the only one, but you throw. There's nothing to impede you. You throw it aside. And he jumped to his feet. He says, I, I'm doing this. And he came to Jesus. And that's the whole point. You've got to come to Jesus. Isn't it amazing they have this expression, he had a come to Jesus moment. This is it. This is a coming to Jesus moment. You throw everything aside, you, you're going to give it all to the Lord. It's a coming to Jesus moment. He came to Jesus. And now we come to the big, big question What do you want? What do you want for me to do for you? What is it that you want? Do you want alms? I mean, do you, do you, you're begging? Do you, do you want me to put some money? Uh, you remember in the book of Acts, there was the, the, the beggar. And, and Peter said, uh, silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus, get up and walk. Hey, was the man asking for alms? So he's clarifying, what do you want? That's why I put all those at the beginning. What do you want? You want happiness? You want friends? Uh, what, what, what do you want? You want money? You want to hit it big? What is, what is it you want? He says, what do you want? Uh, do you want information? He says to the man, wait, wait, do you want money? No, he says, do, do you want information? I mean, what do you want? Do you want information? Remember the, the man that was born blind in John chapter 9, and the disciples were wondering, hey, why is it that he was born blind? What is it you want? You want to know why this happened to you? Isn't that what a lot of people say? When they're in their situation, they're, why is this happening to me? Is that what you want? You want information? The man that was born blind in John chapter 9, the disciples said, did this happen because his parents sinned or because he sinned? And Jesus said it was not for neither one of their purposes. It was because either one of them. You know why this happened? It happened for the glory of God. In his blindness, he could glorify God, and then Jesus spit on the ground. Ooh. He mixes it with his finger and the dust and the dirt, and he makes a, a, an eye salve to put on his eyes. And he anoints his eyes with mud. With mud. And he says, go and wash, and you'll receive your sight. So he goes and he washes, and he can see. Whoa! He can see. Do you want information? Is that what you want? And that's what he's asking. He asked him here, what do you want for me to do? Well, you want to follow in my band? What do you want? What do you want to do? Uh, do you want to be one of my disciples? What do you want? This is the question. What do you want me to do for you? Well, then he shares the aspiration of his heart. It was none of those things. He says, Rabbi... I want to see. I want to see. If he's given his sight, he'll get to see Jesus. Isn't that marvelous? I want to see you. Lord, I want to see you. I think we got a song like that, right? Lord, I want to see you. I want to see you. So in the restoration, Jesus gives him his sight. He first says, go. Well, wait a minute, he just said, come. And now he said, and if he had stopped there, the man would have said, he's telling me to get out of here. Uh, I've asked for something too hard for Jesus. He says, go. I mean, can you imagine this? Go, leave. Well, that's not where Jesus stops. He says, your faith has healed you. When did he have faith? Was it when he cried out, Jesus, son of David? Is that when he had the faith? 
He had registered faith in his heart, and the Lord is acknowledging it's your faith and your faith that has healed you. When I was that eight-year-old boy, and I went down and I prayed with that man as he opened up the Bible and shared with me, it was like the blinders fell from my eyes, and I accepted Jesus as my Savior. That faith is what saved me. It spiritually healed me. It restored a sight to my eyes. I was blind because the blinders had been placed there. They were ripped from my eyes. And I have been a growing Christian ever since because I can see. And the same is true for you. Go, he said, your faith has healed you. Oh, this is beautiful. And immediately he received his sight. I was eight years old. <laughs> I don't know how old this guy was. I don't know how old you were when he removed the blinders from your eyes and you saw Jesus, the Savior, the Son of God. And you know what he did? He followed Jesus. He followed Jesus. Since that time, as eight years old, I've been a follower of Jesus. At 12 year old, years old, Having gone to the same camp, preaching about you need to be baptized, I went home, told my pastor, I need to be baptized to be obedient to Jesus. I got baptized at 12 years old. Now there's a verse in the Bible that says, bad company corrupts good morals. I started hanging around with the wrong people. Sure enough, they were a bigger influence on me than I was on them, and I wandered away from the Lord. But the, whom the Lord loved, he also chastens. He chastened me, and so... I got to a point where I said, God, I may be hard of hearing, but I'm not deaf. I'm getting the message. And I've come back to the Lord, and I've been growing and growing and growing and growing. Went to Bible college, went to seminary, became a pastor. Still growing disciple. Lord is still working. Lord is still teaching me every day, every day. That's called being a follower, a follower. Did I step out of the path? Yeah, I stepped off the path. Did he bring me back on the path? Yeah, he brought me back on, back on the path. But I, I can see in my life there is a journey, a process. I'm following Jesus. And that's what's going on in this text. He's following Jesus. That should be going on not just in the preacher's life, in all of our lives. We're following Jesus because we can see. You are or you were that man. That's why the story's in the Bible. You were or you are that man. Now, if you've come to the Lord Jesus Christ, he's removed your blinders from your eyes and you know that you were that man. If you've never had that moment in your life where the blinders have been removed from him, you are that man. You're still blind. It's one or the other. It's where you are. You're saved or you're lost. You're blind or, or you have sight. Because the God of this age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see. And because they cannot see, I share the gospel so that faith comes by hearing. They hear the word of God. It's through the preaching of the word that people come to faith. They hear the message of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died, he was buried, and he rose again, all for my sins, to take them away, that I might have life eternal, abundant life, a rewarding life. Faith comes from hearing and hearing through the Word of God. The Word of God. That's why I ask you to bring your Bibles to church every week. I ask you to open your Bibles to the passage. I want you to mark your Bibles. Faith comes by hearing and hearing through the Word of God, the Word of Christ. You see, like that blind beggar on the side of the road just outside of Jericho, you need his mercy too. So much so that Ephesians says, I pray also that the eyes of your hearts may be enlightened. Oh, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. That's what this text is saying. In order that I may know you. I want to know you. To know you. And to know the hope to which you have called me. And the riches of your, my glorious inheritance that I have in Christ. Open the eyes of my heart. When you open a Bible and you're going to read, you should just send up this little prayer. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I might see what it is you want me to see. Open the eyes of my heart. 
You need his mercy. You see, just like the man on the road, sitting by the side of the road, Jesus walking by, he's calling you. He's calling you. He's saying, come unto me, all you who are weary and burdened. Remember when I asked you to fill out the, the, the check? What is it you want? What is it you want? What's the burden? What's the blank you want to fill in? What is it you want? He said, come to me and I will give you rest. Rest from whatever that is. That, that you're in your blank. I, I can do it. I can do it. And so he's asking you today, what do you want? What do you want? Seriously, what do you want? I think you want to answer him, Lord, open the eyes of my heart. We're going to sing that in just a moment. Let's pray. Father in heaven, open the eyes of our hearts that we might see you. And when you ask, what is it that you want? Lord, will fill in the blank that your will will be done in our lives. Open the eyes of my heart to see your will for me. For this I pray in Jesus' name. Amen.